All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Google Next, and it's day two. Look who I have with me, Andy Gutmans. Uh, welcome to the Robert Show. Uh, Hi there, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to chat with you. I read your uh, blog yesterday, and uh, was definitely excited to chat with you about various things. Uh, but also, just for audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Tell us more about your role at Google and. Uh, we all know you, but still a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to. So I'm uh, Andy Goodmans, and I run uh, databases for Google Cloud. Uh, so that includes all the operational databases such as Cloud SQL, LOEDB, Bigtable, Spanner, and more. Um, that I would say is 95% of my job. I have another 5%, which is uh, running databases for Google itself. So for those who are not aware, Spanner and Bigtable run search, ads, YouTube, Gmail. Your Gmail account is on Spanner. Right. Um, so that's also a very really exciting part of my job is to kind of scale these databases for Google and then make that make those capabilities available to our customers externally. Now I know why my Gmail runs so smoothly. So thanks, Andy. Uh, quickly also wanting to learn a little about, you know, there have been so many developments that are made in the databases, uh, but at the same time, we have now a bigger play in AI as well. How do you envision that? How do you see the future with AI? Yeah, great question. Uh, you know, operational databases really bridge the gap between foundation models and truly delivering on the promise for enterprise apps, uh, right? I mean, one thing that we all have kind of experienced is the creativity of foundational models. But when you think about enterprise apps, whether that's in financial services or other sectors, right, that creativity is actually negative, right? The, very often you need to have very accurate and up-to-date responses. Right, like you ask what's right. your account balance, you want to know your exact account balance. Exactly. Uh, so this is where really operational databases are so critical, uh, is because when you really want to deploy Gen AI successfully, you have to bring that operational data into your prompt engineering, bring it to the foundation models to deliver those enterprise experiences. So really what's been happening is, you know, databases are cool again, right? Because we're really the big enabler. Uh, and a big part of what we're doing is really making sure that the databases we deliver uh, have all the capabilities that developers need to be successful in building these Gen AI apps. Okay, that's pretty interesting, great insights there. I also, when I was reading your blog, obviously you mentioned a little about the challenges as well. When you kind of, you know, uh, when you're developing the AI assisted uh, capabilities for databases, there are a lot of challenges. How did the team come, uh, overcome those types of challenges? Would you like to share a little? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And, you know, let me distinguish between two things. One is, how do we bring Gen AI features into databases that help developers build mm -hmm. Gen AI apps? That is category number one, which I kind of referred to before. The second one, which I think you're asking about, is how are we using Gen AI right. to make the lives of developers and operators easier? True. And I think on the second one is, you know, we just launched Gemini in databases yesterday. We're super excited about it. Um, really, there's three key pillars in what we announced. The first one is how do we help developers, you know, kind of use natural language to generate SQL, so really help developer productivity. Uh, the second one is how do we help migra migrating uh, applications from legacy databases to more modern databases like Postgres, and how can we use Gen AI for that? The third one is the piece that really is most exciting to me personally, which is how are we using Gen AI to help customers manage their entire databases state? Right. Um, we really have, an, uh, have like this AI system DBA mm. that sits side by side with them and can help on performance management, security, governance. By the way, when you go to sleep, you know, the AI system is still at work for you and watching right. your systems. And so we really have driven a lot of innovation um, and customers are super excited about that. Yeah, that's pretty good uh, for sure. In terms of, you know, I also saw uh, the introduction of Alloy DB AI. What new opportunities do you see for developers creating generative AI around those, that side? Or would you like to share a little? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. You know, for those who are not aware of AdoDB, AdoDB is a Postgres compatible engine, uh, but really meant for you know, the most demanding workload. So it's more scalable, more performant, easier to manage than standard Postgres. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, we also have AdoDB Omni, which you can run anywhere. So we will support this not only on GCP, but also on other clouds also on premises, and so it truly gives customers a one-stop shop you know, for all their database needs, no matter where they want to run or modernize. 
Uh, now, part of AdoDB is we have a set of features we call AdoDB AI, mm. which are features that really help developers as they're building Gen AI apps. We announced that last year. And then yesterday, we announced a huge step up in capabilities around right. AdoDB AI. So just to summarize a few of those, one is we announced a new vector search capability that is PG vector compatible, but is built on uh, technology that we've built and, and developed inside of Google for the last 12 years for supporting you know, some of our businesses like ads and YouTube. We're using that technology now to deliver very differentiated vector search capabilities within AdoDB AI. So that I would say is announcement number one. Number two is we announced natural language interface to AdoDB that helps developers build applications that take natural language prompts. Now, you could kind of say like, hey, okay, but everyone's doing that. The problem though is that truly creating natural language interface that is very accurate very secure and very flexible is actually incredibly hard and no one has really done a great job at that. So we've taken this on, um, we're building that into the database, we've added new security capabilities also mm. in the database to not only make this flexible and accurate but also secure. And so we do believe, you know, AlloyDB is really charting a new course for databases in this space. And then the third thing we announced yesterday around AlloyDB AI is remote model uh, management meaning today already, AlloyDB can call Vertex AI you know, from within transactions, and for example, if you want to generate embeddings or do inferencing. So we've expanded that now to also include other providers. You can also connect AlloyDB with Hugging Face, with Anthropic. We even support OpenAI as part of that. So you know, we're really driving this to be an open ecosystem, runs anywhere, connects to any other AI service. Such great insights and such great integrations for sure. Uh, thanks for sharing that, Andy. Uh, quickly, in terms of, do you have any use cases that you would also like to share with our audience? Uh, obviously, YouTube, Google search, you know, uh, these are fantastic. But any other use case that comes to your mind? Yeah, absolutely. So we have uh, you know some really great uh, case studies. Uh, we have a company called Rignology. They're in the compliance regulatory space. Mm -hmm. um, serve a lot of financial services. They have a chatbot that they've built on top of AlloyDB AI uh, to basically enable both external customers and their internal employees to ask regulatory inquiries. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's made them way, way more efficient and has really delivered a lot of value to customers. Um, uh, you know, a company called Linear that is in the, in the developer space uh, are also using AlloyDB AI uh, to do similar, similarity search between support tickets, making it much easier to uh, detect, you know, when you have duplicate support tickets coming right. in and making the support uh, organization more effective. So we're seeing a lot of these use cases where both either internal employee productivity is being helped and supported or external customer experiences are getting better and in some cases like Rignology, both of those. That's fantastic. Thanks for sharing that example uh, in other use case as well. But in your, just because we are on this topic, in your opinion, what is the most significant impact in of integrating AI and you know operational data in terms of the business transformation? Do you have any other thoughts? That's a great question. Um, you know, I think um, what's been really exciting about bringing these vector capabilities into the operational databases that customers are already using is that they don't have to spend a lot of time right, figuring out how to use a new database, moving data around, like a lot of complexity, right? Um, in this world, they can actually just focus on building their Gen AI feature, right? You have their existing database, the data is there, vector capabilities come in, they can still use standard SQL that they're used to to basically query the database. So I'd say the big impact has really been productivity and simplicity. Um, and so we're very committed to really bring these kind of capabilities to all of our databases so that customers can actually just use the systems they're already used to using and love as opposed to having to try and figure out how to build new pipelines and kind of add complexity to their systems. Yeah, no, I think that makes a lot of sense. In terms of, you know, also looking forward uh, and ahead in the game, what are the next big steps for Google Cloud in advancing in AI and uh, in advancing in AI capabilities and, you know, also the database services? Uh, any thoughts? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I think w one of the things that really differentiates us at Google is that AI is truly part of how we think about the company and how we operate. And we're, you know, we're, 
We're actually the only provider that both has, you know, its own hardware infrastructure, right, to train right. and, and, and uh, inference models. And then we're also the only ones who really are training, you know, only hyperscaler really that's training at scale, right? That, and, and not just using third parties for that. Right. Uh, what that actually gives us is a real opportunity to innovate more, more quickly for our customers. So for example, as my team is working on natural language to SQL translation, my team can actually upstream data sets to Gemini training to then kind of get that back, right? That closed loop mm. of influence on how we're training the model is how we're improving systems for customers. I think Google is in a very uh, special place in the industry, right, to be able to serve our customers better. So that's been very exciting to us where the database team can actually make an impact on how mm. we're training models. And then, you know, as I said before, from our, our perspective, really two key opportunities to serve our customers better. One, innovating on core capabilities that databases have mm. to make Gen AI development easier, faster, more secure, more price performant. And this is where you're gonna see things like vector support, ecosystem integrations, natural language support, security features, all coming into the database. And then the second opportunity is, how do we use you know, uh, Gen AI in Gemini and databases mm. to make our customers way more productive? And there's so much innovation we think we can deliver to make developers and operators really more productive. And frankly, what that means for businesses is they can take their highly valued staff and spend more of their time actually focused on business outcomes as opposed to taking care of the undifferentiated, you know, heavy lifting of man managing the infrastructure. Love it. Uh, thanks for sharing those insights. Uh, and if for anyone who's getting into AI, Gen AI, and building apps as well. Do you have any other uh, advice for them? Any good practices, best practices that you would yeah. like to suggest? I mean, this will sound self-serving, but I actually mean it. Like, <laughs> download AlloDB Omni, um, start playing around with vector embeddings, because that's really the, the fuel of what enables you to get the right prompts built for foundation models. And just kind of experiment, whether these are you know embedding models on text or so on, we're just kind of running some similarity searches, starting to also do some filters based on data that's already in the database. I think you'll find very quickly by just playing around a bit in, a, in an environment that you kind of already know, like you know, 50% of database, 50% of developers are using Postgres, so it's a very familiar environment. Mm. I think you will very quickly see the power of you know what vector embeddings can do, how to start using foundation models, and I think once you get kind of those first steps going. Um, you know, it's your imagination that really controls what you can build. Wow, I love it. And thanks for sharing that. Uh, one last question for our audience. Uh, if folks want to reach out to you, if they want to follow the content, I follow you on LinkedIn, so yeah. I know the blogs, the white papers that you put out uh, at length, and uh, I love reading them. But any other place, or LinkedIn is the best place. Yeah, Where, so first of all, thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I have mostly moved to using LinkedIn. Um, as a place where I kind of post blog posts and, and, and thoughts and so on. So I would say that is that has become the best place to kind of get the latest around the database, you know, services I lead uh, and some of my thoughts. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your time today. This was uh, amazing, great insights, Andy, and definitely looking forward to keep our conversation going. Great. Well, thanks yeah. so much for having me. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.